All right, listen, I always enjoy talking basketball, just in general. I enjoy talking ball. I mean, who doesn't like talking ball? But I enjoy it that much more when Chrissy Winter Scott is around because she's a baller herself, <laughs> a baller and a scholar. Now, how, how about that? How about that description? That's what you should, you should put down on your business cards. Baller, a baller and, and a scholar. And a, well, but I graduated now, so, you know. I'm oh, still, but no, you, you, but a scholar, you like, you, 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 uh, you studied the game, you played the game, okay. and then, okay. and then put That's your, it. uh, bring your Maryland jersey in there too, just in case. I mean, you know, people need to shout out, that out, shout out Maryland. <laughs> Move so to we the had side. A, <laughs> how you doing, Chrissy? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on again. This is so much fun. You know, I love March, so it's a holiday for me. I love it. Uh, the, the whole month is a holiday, huh? Well, I want to ask you about a few things going on in, in March. Mm -hmm. And I saw, yeah. uh, you know, I saw a couple of references to this because there, there have been some upsets. Uh, let's talk about, the, uh, talk about the women's tournament at first. There have been mm -hmm. some upsets in the women's tournament. Uh, UConn was not one of those teams that was upset. But it, it led to this conversation of parity. Mm -hmm. uh, almost, I know. Uh, what, what, one by five points? You know, yeah, uh, we close. always talk about, you know, parity and this is good. Is it really coming to the women's game? Mm -hmm. How close are we to that? Because we've had so we had such a run. It was Tennessee, then went from Tennessee to Yukon, South Carolina, Notre Dame a couple of times. Are we close mm -hmm. to having a surprising champ? Or, or, I think or so. A run of surprising champs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's been like that for some time. I mean, UConn hasn't won a championship since 2016, right? So, I mean, there's been a, um, a drought for them and that's not shady. That's just stats, you know, stats on my, but, um, but with that being said, I know that the last couple of seasons has been really, really good for the parody of the game and the conversation that you're discussing. And I think it's been like that on the men's side, and we've seen that again this year, uh, Murray State, et cetera, et cetera. And so the, the assuredness of the top seeds, when you're looking at percentages, a one and two seed, I mean, it's still an astronomical number in terms of percentage to win the overall championship. So yes, there is more parity. And yes, in the Sweet 16, there are teams like Creighton uh, who upset Iowa. Uh, you Iowa, know, there are wow. some tremendous, yes, there are some tremendous upsets in the field of 62, or I'm sorry, of 32 after having 68 teams in this season for the women. But I think, you know, just to, you know, have teams like Iowa be upset on their home floor. I mean, that's a big win for Creighton. And, and Miss Jensen, you know, she was on the Iowa team last year and then hit the game winner or the go ahead shot, uh, the three point shot to, to put them up. So it's just all the drama is, is being seen for sure on the women's side. And I, and whether or not I don't like the conversation of good for women's basketball because women's basketball is great already. Right. It doesn't need right, like good. that to be great. I mean, I, I think there's still eyes on the game regardless and, you know, UConn, you know, being pushed to the absolute limit, Okay, by Belmont, a great team, 52 points for UConn. I don't know if any other team moving forward in the tournament is going to be able to do that to a, a really, really talented UConn squad. So, you know, there, there are games where you're just, I mean, your eyebrows are raised, whether the upset happens or it's close to being an upset. So I, I think it's, it's just great for March, whether it be men's or women's basketball, you know, to see that kind of parody. And that's why we love the brackets. That's why everyone's bracket is busted because we just don't know how it's going to end up on the men's side or the women's side. Well, listen, I'm not, I'm not advocating, uh, you know, for you to just blow your money, but okay. But I'll, I'll <laughs> let, let's just have some, let's, let's have some monopoly money here for a second. Okay. Uh, we're betting. <laughs> let's uh, we okay. just bet, put all your money. You got to put all of it, not just a little bit. You got to put it all okay. in. It's, Push like, it all in. it's like final jeopardy. Got to I, I, I got to put it all in just to have a chance to win. All right. So, who's going to win it? Who's going to win this whole thing? I would say on the women's side, I'm going with South Carolina. And you know, they had some hiccups along the way, just two losses this season. One game off uh, a one-point loss to Missouri during the SEC portion of the regular season and then they lost, of course, to Kentucky and the SEC tournament 
championships. So I think they're fueled. I think they're ready. I think that they are um, they're seasoned. And I know that they are battle tested from last year's disappointing loss to Stanford in the semifinals of the Final Four. One put back away, one inch away. Aaliyah Boston's shot just came that short. So I think they're hungry. I think they're primed and ready. And I think that experience prepared them from last year. But I also think the two losses that they had to go through this season, I think that has them fired up and ready to go. And you never count out Don Staley for a redo or a run it back situation, which I think a lot of us are are seeing uh, for South Carolina being the queen of, of the uh, Final Four and the queen of the women's basketball season this year. They've sat at number one all year for a reason, even with those two losses. So any other team who had incurred those losses, I think they would have been bumped out of that number one spot. But I think South Carolina and the, the faith that I think a lot of people have in Don Staley and the, and the fans, which are, are the fans there in South Carolina that Don Staley calls them, I think that they are, they're ready for it. And I think that it's gonna be really tough to beat them moving forward in the regionals and in the final four as well. I mean, they're, they're ready for it. You know, Chrissy, uh, uh, some of these young women will be like their, their head coach, Don Staley. They'll play in the WNBA uh, mm -hmm. just like she did. And as we look at that league, uh, a lot of things with the, with the WNBA are newsworthy, mm -hmm. including Brittany Griner. Now, it's, it's what, mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure I have the date. It's March 22nd now. Now, this yes. is a story. This just blows my mind. It's March 22nd. Since mid-February, Mm -hmm. Brittany Griner has been detained in Russia because Russian officials say they found pretty much some traces of cannabis uh, in mm -hmm. her, you know, cannabis oil in her luggage. And right. she's been detained for over a month. And, mm -hmm. and there was another report out that th this may be extended until mid-May. So, I, know. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a tense story anyway. It becomes even yes. bigger, even more tense when you consider... U.S. Russia relations, especially right now, what's going on with, you know, a, a lot of countries standing mm -hmm. in support of Ukraine and against Russia. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen here? How does this situation become eased and eventually resolved? Well, number one, uh, I just feel devastated for Brittany Griner and, and her family, and you know, and her fans too. I just think that. Um, it's a tremendously scary situation. I mean, I played overseas years ago and it was before creature comforts and FaceTime and all of these things. And it was scary. I mean, I love to play and I love the opportunity to go over there and play. But I remember my dad, rest in peace, always told me never go anywhere without your passport. I, mean, I was always head on a swivel, always cognizant of being in a different area, different culture. Um, and I, you know, I want to be careful as well, because I know Brittany Griner's family has said that they didn't want to bring a large amount of attention to the situation and make it worse for Brittany. And, and we definitely don't want to do that. But at the same time, I, I just hope she knows and her family knows that we're all really praying for her safe return. Um, basketball aside, I mean, if she doesn't play basketball anymore, that's fine for me. I just want her to be back and and be back and be safe. I think that's what her family wants. That's what her fans want. And she's constantly in, in our thoughts every single day. I know for me, I you know look and see if there have been any updates. I know Dawn Staley, we were just talking about her. I know she has been very um, vocal about you know, getting legalities involved to, to get her back here. So, I mean, the WNBA draft is on April 11th. The season begins the first week of May and May 19th is the date they're giving, like you said, and, and that's into the season. So, I mean, we're not even thinking X's and O's. We're not even thinking tactically. We're not even thinking roster and salary cap and yada, yada. We're talking about a human being and we're talking about, their safe return here. And I think that is the most critical of this discussion. And I hope that that it comes out the way it's supposed to in, in a safe way for her. That's well said. That's well said, Chrissy. And you know, it, you're, you're right. It's just one of those situations where you wanna, you wanna talk about it, but you don't wanna do anything that will, 
you know, inflame the situation. So you're kind exactly. of cautiously, like uh, we all are, just kind of cautiously working your sure. way around it because you just don't for know, sure. um, just don't know mm -hmm. how it's going to turn out, but uh, hoping, hoping for the best, clearly. Yeah. Now to, uh, to, to much, yeah. you know, trivial matters, to trivial matters uh, mm -hmm. on the court. You know, I, I, I start off asking you about the women's game and, you know, upsets. And if we're getting to this point where we'll see upsets become the norm, yeah. I really feel like I love the St. Peter's story. I love St. Peter's and the men's tournament. Yeah. And I think this is one of the things that, see, I just need, Chrissy, tell me, tell me that uh, this will happen in 2000, uh, 2030. Okay, not too far away. 2030, that a team like St. Peter's yes. could just win the whole thing. Like I, I, I'm, 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 I'm fine with a 15 over a two. They beat Kentucky, right? And they didn't seem surprised. And they beat right. Murray, they like, and they were just like, "Yeah, okay, Next. yeah, we beat them." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. But I want to get to the point. I love to see a small school. I think their enrollment is like 2,500, 2,300, something like that. I love to see a small school be at the top of the college <laughs> basketball world in the men's or women's game. How close are we to getting that? Oh, very close. I mean, very we're close, seeing really? window. Very close, very close. And Ooh. I think, you know, I think, and, and you have to look at what's happened in the in the last couple of seasons with, with COVID, number one, um, and players returning. So the experience level for a lot of teams is different than it would normally be in that regard, but also, the recruiting process has changed as well. It's like, well, you know, these teams have 23 and 24 year olds. We need you to come in so we can battle these teams that are keeping players for an extra year, right? Um, to bolster their opportunities, to bolster their um, return to NCAA tournament prominence, right? So when you have all of these factors woven together, this is a prime time for teams like St. Peter's to go off like they did. And for them to do it on St. Patrick's Day and then for people to be saying, we need to rename it to St. Peter's Day, uh, when they, when they beat Kentucky. Amy, hey, come on, man. I, I mean, you, you have to, you have to, first of all, give your respect. And I, I've seen the contrast in, in photos to the arenas that they each play in Kentucky's and then, you know, obviously Rep Arena and then, you know, where St. Peter's plays their games. And it, and it, I mean, no shade, I'm just saying what I saw. It, it's like a high school gym, very nice, very big and very nice, but it was not, you know, the same in terms of the support that they get. I heard, um, I think it was Murray State. Um, didn't they have um, an issue getting their cheerleaders there and, and people got them? there to the round of 32. So it, there, there's not a lot of financial support, but I tell you what, that doesn't measure the heart and soul of these kids who just want a crack at it, who play the game in a hungry manner. They're not elitist. They're not asking, hey, you need to do this for me. They're willing to do it for the team. And I think you're seeing that be what is closing the gap between you know the mid majors and the high majors and the power five teams i think you're seeing these kids who want a chance to prove themselves and they're not only proving themselves but they are coming together as a collective unit with that kind of energy that is combustible and we've seen that this year and i think that's going to be what continues in both the men's game and the women's game for that matter and you know, players have something to prove. And I think that beats, hey, I want to come back one more time and, and try it again, you know? And we yeah, get see, everything. We get 10 pairs of shoes. We get all these creature comforts or whatever. And then you got these kids coming through the mud to get what they want. And that's the difference. The claws are popped out. The back is hunched. The brow is furled. And they're ready to go for it. And all of them believe go. in that same way. All of them believe in that same way. And it makes a difference. Hey, listen, you keep talking like that. I, you make me feel like I got some game. You're like, I'm ready. Like, Let's go. Come on. I can. <laughs> Let's, go. <laughs> Let's go. Let me get out there. But you know, it's funny. We were we were this close. We really were this mm -hmm. close to getting and I think the latest yeah. the, the, the closest example was Butler like when Gordon Hayward had that mm -hmm. shot against Duke and it was yeah. just off the rim. Now if Butler another small school. Yeah, mid major if Butler mm -hmm. beats Duke. Then you have your true, you have your true upset. Like, even like a lot of people go back in the day mention, uh, you know, North Carolina State over Houston. Well, 
they're still they were, they were an ACC team. Um, they're a tough team. They had NBA. They had multiple NBA players on the roster. It's not like it was an upset, yeah. but it wasn't St. Peter's yeah. level, Butler Thank level you. upset. No, no, no. And I think, you know, even when George Mason, you know, a DMV team, when George Mason went to the final four, I think that was, you know, one of the mid-major teams that came through the mud and Jim Laranega you know, who is now at Miami, yep. who has his team back in the Sweet 16 this year. I think you have that kind of fight and that kind of where do they come from, you know, kind of uh, thought behind that team as well um, several years back. But I, I think it's it's not out of the question that it's going to continue to be tougher and tougher for these Power 5 teams to make it all the way through the six or seven games that they need in the NCAA tournament to win a title. And it's not a given. I mean, everybody wants to win. Let's get that clear. Everybody wants to win a championship, okay? And when you look back at, you know, NBA players, for example, like Patrick Ewing, I mean, played his butt off. He's Hall of Famer. No ring, right? And it's not a shady comment. I'm just saying everybody wants one, okay? Not everybody gets one who probably deserves one. So there's a difference when, you know, these, these college teams have these hungry players, I'm telling you, and that's what's going to make a difference. And it's going to make a difference when these head coaches of these mid-major teams go into these homes of these players who don't want to sit the bench at these Power 5 teams. They want to go and play, and they want to make a difference, and they want to see if their effort can impact the result, whether they're going to win or lose. And and I, I tip my hat to them. I mean, there's so many opportunities, over 320 schools, Division One, and all the other divisions too. Like there's so many opportunities for young people to really develop and and grow as as young men and women. And it's more than you know whether or not they can run a play properly. <laughs> it's the fight. It is the you know the guts and the character that's developed through the journey of competing at that level that really. Uh, it excites me, number one, but I think that's why we watch, right? We watch for the drama of that. We watch for the fight of that and the inspiration that it brings to the generation behind them. All right, Christy, remember, baller and scholar, get the Maryland, <laughs> get the Maryland uh, jersey in there. You know, <laughs> just got it. You got to get it. And, and, the, and the inset. Look at that. You got the Maryland jersey and the inset. So that's just really, that's what that, that frame kind of encapsulates it all. I always enjoy uh, speaking with you, Chrissy. And then you, maybe you can come back when, let's see, you got South Carolina, South Carolina for the women. And then uh, yes. I think you're going to pick Gonzaga. All that stuff. You're going to either pick Gonzaga or St. Peter's. Who you got? I mean, I'm just going to go ahead, since my bracket is already torn up anyway, I'm going to go with St. Peter's now there. Hmm. I said it. No, right, I'm going Peter's. with Gonzaga. I'm going with Gonzaga. Okay. Okay, you know, I have two. I have my two brackets. I'm a Gemini, so I can have two different ones. So. There we go. That's it. <laughs> on each shoulder. All right, your Gemini. There's your Gemini answer. All right, Chris. That's me. We appreciate it. We'll talk with you soon. All right, Mike. Thank you so much. No problem. Anytime. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.